David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, there's time when a company enters a crowded space and you kind of wonder why. Uh, it's just more of the same and they don't really bring anything new to the table or fulfill a specific need. Contrary to that, there are times when companies enter a space and, and settle right in because they, they really do a good job of filling a gap that wasn't covered previously or done so poorly. And it's nice to see companies like this succeed, mainly because they succeed on their own merits and the strength of their product and innovation rather than simply riding on the coattails of a popular trend or their competition. Today I'm going to talk about a company and a product which I believe falls under that second group. Uh, one that's uh, filled a definite need in the pen case space and that company is Knock. Um, what I have for you today is a review of the Knock pen case called the Sinclair. This is what it looks like right here. Uh, and what I'm going to do is go over some of the parts and the features of this Sinclair, uh, talk about what I care for, what I don't care for, show some measurements, uh, and then also show what pens fit well in the case. Uh, in addition, I will be giving away this very case, courtesy of Knock, uh, and I'll let you know what you need to do in order to enter the drawing near the end of the review. Uh, and stay tuned afterward, after the review, for a little uh, video I put together to document a trip that my, uh, my son and I recently took to Atlanta in order to see our uh, Chargers play the Falcons. Uh, nothing fountain pen related, I just wanted to put something together for fun. So uh, maybe something down the line. I might include more extra content like this, but it's just something a little bit different. Okay, uh, back to more important things, uh, namely Knock. Uh, Knock was founded back in 2013 and is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, it's owned and operated by two gentlemen, Brad Dowdy, who you might know from the Pen Attic blog and podcast, and Jeff Bruckwicki, uh, who is uh, an expert in the manufacturing of soft goods. Uh, for the most part, Brad handles the business side and marketing side of things, and, uh, and Jeff handles production. Uh, Knock began doing business through a successful Kickstarter campaign, uh, and they recently had another very successful campaign to launch, launch their new uh, Lanier briefcase. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, I was down in Atlanta on a trip, uh, and Brad and Jeff were kind enough to have us over to their shop, where they manufacture most of their products. Uh, here's Jeff working on sewing what I believe is one of their Brass Town models, which is a zip roll case. Uh, and then after the sewing is done, they're bound together and then turned inside out so the seams are not exposed. Uh, it was kind of neat to see how their cases are created 100% by hand from start to finish. Let's take a look at the closer product. This is the Knox Sinclair. It is uh, four inches by six and a quarter inches, and Knock gets its name for all of their products from mountains and lakes in the Georgia area. Uh, there is a uh, Lake Sinclair, which is a man-made lake southeast of Atlanta that has uh, a very interesting shape to it. Kind of looks like a lightning strike. Uh, the outside of the case is made with what's called 1000D nylon with a water repellent coating. And all of the seams are internal. And the only outside stitching is this little bit by the zipper, which is a nice touch. I like that it adds a bit of the uh, interior color as a subtle exterior accent. The Sinclair has dual zippers, which I actually really like. Uh, this way you have the option of only opening up the top of the case in order to get at what's useful inside. Uh, if you're carrying a number of things in here, which could potentially fall out. So let's unzip this to show you one of my favorite things about this case, and that is the interior color. I just love this pop of blue when you open this case. It's like business on the outside, party on the inside. Uh, and this particular color scheme is their Raven Aqua. Uh, and the interior is a nylon cloth. It's a bit softer than the outside. You know, I, I like that the zippers only go around halfway down the sides of the case. This creates a, a pocket in the middle of the case. Uh, as far as the sides are concerned, uh, one of the, on one of the sides there's slots for three pens on this side, uh, and the other has a pocket which is the perfect size for a memo book like Field Notes or even a uh, knock memo pad. Um, I have a couple here. Here is a knock memo pad. And then here is a field note. And two of these fit in just fine. Uh, you could probably fit in a, a third or a fourth without much effort. The third goes in there fine, no problem whatsoever. Um, on the other side, there is the slot for three pens. You know, um, I'm really impressed with the craftsmanship 
of this case. Uh, it's very sturdy and uh, it's built to be used. Uh, the seams are, are very strong and uh, you know I can't really see a weak point in this design where it would break or tear or wear out over time. Uh, the stitching in this model is a darker blue which I feel looks a little bit better than just having black stitching or even stitching that matches the interior exactly. And, but it does match the accent stitching I showed on the outside. I took a couple of microscope pictures to show the difference between the external and internal material. Uh, here's what the external 1000D nylon looks like. And here's what the internal nylon cloth looks like. I kind of like that picture. It might make it neat com for a neat computer wallpaper. Uh, and here's a look at one of the seams. There is a tag on the inside here. Uh, one side of the set tag says Knock with the Knock logo. Uh, Knock actually took their name from the Japanese slang for the retractable clicky part of a pen, like on a uh, pilot vanishing point here, this part of the pen that they're talking about. Uh, and that uh, they took off the K and that's how they ended up with Knock. Uh, the N of Knock is a representation, uh, the logo is a representation of this clicky part of the pen uh, and that on the other side of the tag is a nod to the Japanese origins of the name. It actually says knock in Japanese uh, katakana. Now let's take a look at a variety of the pens uh, and a variety of pens and show how well they actually fit into this case. Um, first of all we have a Pilot Stella 90S which is a rather small and thin pen uh, and then we have a Twisby Diamond 580 and that fits in just fine. And then a Lamy All-Star. And you can see that these pens fit in here very well, even if we put a, a couple of notepads in here. That there's no issue whatsoever with these. Um, you know, and, uh, and it closes just fine. Now, in regard to some girthier pens, um, let's show some different pens here. I have a a Mont Blanc 149 and then a Pelican M1000 and then a Delta Oversized and again no problem at all and this is three rather girthy pens and that problem those fit just fine and then finally how about some larger pens here we have a, a wall Eversharp deco band. This thing is huge. And then we have a Classic Pens LB5. And then we have a, one of my longer pens in my collection, which is a Franklin Christoph Model 66. Now, they all fit in here fine, but the uh, Model 66 is just about as long of a pen that will fit comfortably. Uh, that it's starting to push it a little bit, but it still fits in here just fine. You know, and what I also really like is that, you know, a small pen like the Pilot Stella, uh, it, that fits in here just fine. It doesn't feel like it's swimming around in here. Um, but in, in the very same slot that a very large pen like the, the Wall Eversharp or the LB5, uh, you know, uh, can fit. And those don't feel like they're crammed in here too tight. It's a really nice design. The Knox Sinclair is available in several different colors through their website, which I'll put a link to in the notes below. Uh, Knox recently began selling the Sinclair cases through select retailers, and there are additional color combinations available only through those retailers, which as of this recording were uh, Goulet and Anderson, as well as Van S. Pence. Uh, and the price for the Sinclair is $40 no matter where you purchase it, whether it will be direct directly through Knox or through one of the retailers. And, you know, I feel that that $40 price point is, a very, is very fair for the Sinclair, and I feel that it gives Knock the ability to tap into a customer base who wasn't necessarily being targeted strongly by other customers or other companies. Uh, there are a lot of quality pen cases and wraps out on the market, and the majority of made are made of leather and typically come with an elevated price due to the material. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with a very nice leather case, but if you're just getting started with fountain pens or the majority of your pens are in that low to mid-range price, uh, the Sinclair might be a better choice. Uh, it it kind of matches up better with certain lower and mid-range pens, like a Lamy All-Star pairs really nice with this pen, and just about any Twisby pairs up really nicely as well. But that doesn't necessarily mean that this case is only meant for that range of pens. 
I have no problem using some of my expo more expensive pens with this case as well. Um, Knox cases are made in the USA, and uh, in order to meet the demand for their expanding retail business, they've begun outsourcing some a portion of their manufacturing, uh, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, after an extensive search, they were able to find a domestic manufacturer to work with that could produce case cases at the very same quality as they make in-house. Uh, and one thing that, thing that I do like about that is that every single product is shipped back to the NOC headquarters uh, so that any products made by the partner company go through the same rigorous Q&A uh, process as their in-house production. Uh, and Brad and Jeff put their hands on every single case uh, to make sure it's up to their standards, which is nice. Um, okay, story time. Uh, you know those times in your life when you have an idea and you think it will be really cool, but when you attempt to execute on that idea, you fail miserably and look like an idiot. Well, that's what happened with me when visiting Knock. Uh, in a recent video, I mentioned that uh, I showed some video from a drone that I had shot, and I mentioned that there really isn't much use for drone footage in fountain pen videos. Well, I had an idea. During my visit to Knock, I thought it would be cool to get a shot of the uh, exterior of their building uh, with my drone, and then I'd show the front of their building and then kind of fly off higher and higher and higher and you'd into the distance and the building would get smaller and you'd see the surrounding area and be just kind of a nice shot to end this video. Um, well, that was the plan anyways. Uh, what happened, however, was that I fired up the drone and then as it was hovering just a few feet off the ground in front of the building, you know, I glanced down at my controller to turn on the camera and at that precise moment, uh, and I still am not exactly sure why, the drone drifted a bit. And then it proceeded to clip Brad's car. Sorry, Brad. Uh, which was uh, then broke a propeller and suddenly the drone was out of control. Uh, and I tried unsuccessfully to regain control, but since the propeller was compromised, that wasn't happening. And I was in danger of flying into a busy street. So I didn't have the control to land it softly, so I had to like down it quick and it proceeded to crash. The drone survived, but not my ego. And it's all on tape. So, here you go. If you would like to win this very case courtesy of Knock, just leave a comment on YouTube. Today is uh, Friday, November 25th, 2016. Uh, that sometime after midnight on Monday, November 28th, uh, I will randomly select a winner from all of those who left a comment. Um, as for a, a topic, uh, why don't you let me know about a time when you maybe attempted to do something you thought would be really cool but failed miserably. Uh, again, it's not a requirement, just a topic suggestion. Uh, thanks to uh, Brad and Jeff at Knock for providing this case for giveaway. Um, in the time I've had the Sinclair, uh, you know, I've really grown to like it so much that I, I really wasn't looking forward to uh, giving this one away. So I've actually purchased one for myself from one of their retailers because I really like this color combination here. Um, also, I think it's definitely a high quality product worth picking up and supporting the company. So thanks for watching and I'll talk to you later. What's it look like to you? Like a peach? No, I mean, what does it really look like?
And kick is up and pause. And there we are. Right there. And the kick is good.